What's good, YouTube? It's your boy all day 0511, aka Ricky Raymond Jr. Man, y'all see we back out here in another video. Now, excuse me, before we get into this video, I want to say this video is not to take any credit away from Luka Doncic. This video is not to bash Luka. This video is not to say that Luka doesn't deserve everything that he's been at. This guy's having an amazing career. He's having a crazy season this year, especially for this just to be his rookie season. So, like I said, this video isn't made to bash him or anything. This video is strictly here. So I can kind of uh, open your eyes or kind of point out some of these other guys who we don't really look at and you don't really think of. And, you know, just kind of talk about them, you know. So just to kind of it's pretty much just to expand your view of what you see in the media all the time and what you just hear on ESPN. Because on ESPN, if you watch ESPN, all you hear any about any talks about rookies, always Luca, 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 Luca. Or, you know, you got the, the Lakers situation. But look, without further ado, man, let's go ahead and hop into this video. Now, Luka Doncic was uh, was selected in his draft. I mean, I don't even think I really have to give a dialogue of this guy. He was drafted by Atlanta. Atlanta and, uh, excuse me, Atlanta and the Mavericks wound up making a trade for, they pretty much just swapped picks. So, Luka wound up going to the Mavericks while Trey Young wound up going to Atlanta. Now, Luka has been mainstream media. Everybody knows that. I mean, Luka is everywhere in the media. When you turn on the TV and you hear Rookie of the Year, you hear Luka Doncic, Luka Doncic, Luka Doncic, Luka Doncic. Now, Luka is an amazing player. Let's not get it wrong. But I feel like one of the reasons why Luka is always one of the most talked about players, especially for when it comes for Rookie of the Year title, it's because of... of um, where he came from uh, we haven't seen a euro player like this in a very very long time he could probably be one of the best euro league players to ever come out now reason why i'm saying that is because i i that's just my opinion like i said that's why i think that you know you might have your opinion you might say well these other rookies luke just look at what luke has done i mean he's taking over games you know he's averaging what 20 points like six rebounds and seven i'm at six Six assists and seven rebounds. I mean, yes, those stats are amazing. But at the same time, we have to look at it and we have to break it down on where exactly is Luka doing this season. I mean, Luka is not shooting the greatest field goal amount. Like, don't get it wrong. He averages 20 points, which is still amazing. And like I said, I'm not here to discredit Luka because he is a rookie. And I'm giving all of them the benefit of the doubt because they are, of course, rookies. But Luca is just not shooting so hot. Like he's shooting 35% from the three-point line, somewhere around that, which is not that very. It's not that good. 40%, 40% and up is kind of that percentage where it's kind of like, ah, okay, you know, that's where a lot of the elite shooters shoot. Well, a lot of the elite shooters are shooting close to 45, maybe 50. Just depends on who it is. But I mean, Luca's taking close to 20 shots a game. Now, when you're taking 20 shots a game, and you'd say every point that Luca was to score was two. He's only scored all two pointers. That'd be around 40 points, and he's only averaging 20 points. We may say he shoots roughly under 50% for a field goal. Now he shoots only 43% from the field goal line, which isn't bad. Like I said, I'm not here to discredit him, especially with the minutes that he's playing, with 32 minutes, which is amazing. You know, I can't like I said, I can't discredit that. But what I am here to show is, is that even though Luca's having a season like this, and another reason why I believe that a lot of times that he's kind of looked at as rookie of the year is because of the team he's playing for a lot of these other guys that i have on his list their teams that they play for are not teams that we look at and we see on you know televised games or games that come on late night games you know what i mean so like i said i'm not here to discredit luca in any way he has shown that he can take over games like i said but it's it's more facts it's more stats i'm always been a stat person so when you look at this you have to look at the stats how many shots he's taking is he really getting his teammates involved etc and sometimes it's not all about stats it's about watching his games now like i said stat lines can be misleading sometimes you just have to watch what he does but uh one of the guys on this list that i'm gonna have to go with is trey young now i know a lot of you guys are like trey young i you must be thinking i'm joking go ahead click off the video now now listen hear me out real quick trey young has really shown that even though he he's shown that even though he's not having the greatest three-point percentage especially with him being compared to steph curry you know saying that he's going to be one of the greater shooters in the league even though he hasn't really lived up to his three-point percentage being that well and high which I kind of knew already because the NBA is a lot different than NCAA. He is still showing that he can do other things. He's 
starting to learn how to get his teammates more involved. He's starting to learn when to shoot, when not to shoot. And Trey Young has also not maybe not as many game winners as Luka, but Trey Young has hit a few game winners. Trey Young has done some clutch performance plays towards the end of the game when it mattered. Trey Young has shown that he can get his teammates involved. He has shown that he can knock down the clutch three. Trey Young has synced plenty of games with his clutch three from shooting it way downtown, which downtown Steph Curry range if you want to call it that I don't want to kind of compare him to Steph Curry because I'm pretty sure he wants to be known as Trey Young now Trey Young is averaging 16 points seven assists almost close to eight assists and three rebounds a game now let's remember Trey Young is only 6'1 6'2 depends where you have him listed some people have him 6'1 6'2 but he's about 6'1 but we all know how sometimes that can be misleading so Trey Young is shooting for a 30% from the three-point line, which I look, I know it doesn't sound as good as Lucas, but he also shooting 40% from behind. I'm at 40% field goal. Now I know what you're saying. How in the hell is you comparing this guy to Luca? Now here's where I told you you have to give him rookies credit. Every now and then Trey Young does come out. He has a shaky night, but on the nights that he is shaky, he has shown that he can get his teammates involved. The last 10 games that Trey Young has played, he's average, He's shooting 45% from the field goal. He's averaging 7 assists, and the guy's also averaging a steal in 20 points. Now, on games like, for instance, Chicago, Trey Young shot 1 for 12, but he still was able to come in with 12 assists, 1 steal, and he only had 3 turnovers that game, which is kind of showing that he's kind of known that, okay, sometimes I know I won't be able to shoot as well sometimes but he's finding other ways to get himself involved and his teammates while still helping his teammates not win their games but you know still compete and that's where a lot of the why i think sometimes trey young is kind of overlooked is because his team is not doing so well he plays for the atlanta hawks atlanta hawks are only what i trying to think of their record i think their record is it's, it's a negative record let's let, let's just keep it at that like you know their, their record is not good it's horrible but Still, it's the difference between Trey Young and, uh, excuse me, Luka Doncic is that even though Luka doesn't have any guys that are in his position, that's like, okay, like, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't have a LeBron James, a Kevin Durant to mentor him. He still has people like Dirk, DeAndre Jordan, you know, Dennis Smith Jr., even if you want to include him. He's just kind of saying, hey, don't make this mistake that I made when I was in the league. You know, don't do this when I, you know, just kind of coaching him and showing him the game and teaching him how to play. Trey Young doesn't have that guy. Trey Young plays for a young Atlanta Hawks team who he doesn't really have. The oldest guy on that team is Vince Carter. Now, let's be real. Vince Carter at this point, you know, don't get it wrong. Vince Carter was the man back in the days. But at this point, he's just here just chasing a check in the league. But you can't blame somebody who loves the game of basketball. Now, besides all that, Trey, like I said, Trey Young doesn't really have that mentor that can really coach him at the point guard position, which is why you have to kind of give him that, 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 that credit. Because like I said, even though... Trey Young is not having as good of a season. You see, as as the season, as the uh, excuse me, the year continues to progress, Trey Young is steadily increasing, increasing. He's getting better. He's getting better. He's shooting a higher percentage, etc. Now, one guy on this list that's not on here, and I'm not really gonna go too detail on him before I go up. Come up with this last guy because this last guy here is goodness gracious. It, like this guy should definitely be talked about rookie of the year. But Jaron Jackson Jr. and Marvin Bagley the third. Now start off with Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley is having a pretty nice season also, but he hasn't really shown that he can. He's been injured most of the season, so that's why he's not really on this list. Same way with Jaron Jackson Jr. Jaron Jackson Jr. kind of just, he's been having a mediocre rookie year. I mean, he, the guy doesn't even average, you know, 10 rebounds. But it's, like I said, it's not his fault. I'm not blaming none of these guys. I'm not saying they're bust. I'm just saying why they didn't make this list because I know some people are going to say Jaron Jackson Jr., but if we're talking about stat-wise, which is what a lot of people going to talk about, like Jaron Jackson Jr. hasn't really shown that he can take over games. He's not that focal point of that Memphis Grizzlies team, you know, if you get what I'm saying. Same thing with the Kings. Marvin Bagley the third is now starting to kind of come back into the play, you know, a field of things. But really still that team is still De'Aaron Fox's team. You get what I'm saying? So that's why these two guys are not on here. I just kind of want to throw that in here just in case somebody was in the comment section wondering where they were at. But look, anyway, getting to this third guy. DeAndre Aiden, 7'1", 250 pounds, and a number one pick in his previous draft. Now, reason why I say it like that is because DeAndre Aiden is averaging 16, almost close to 17 points, 10 rebounds, and a block a game. Now, that's not that's not even a focal point of his stat. That's not what I want to bring up. DeAndre Aiden, at the time of me making this video, is shooting 60. 
I don't think y'all hear me. 60% from the field goal. 60% from the field goal, averaging 17 and 10 rebounds a game and still a block. Now, don't get me wrong, Luke, I'm mean not Luke, excuse me, but DeAndre Aiden, he has been injured. He's injured actually right out right now with a left ankle. I want to say it was like a left ankle sprain or something like that. He's out with that right now. Now, another reason why I don't feel like, I feel like Phoenix or DeAndre Aiden isn't talked about is because Phoenix is 11 and 41. They're projected to get another lottery pick, you know, so I feel like that's another reason why they, this guy's just not talked about. But still, DeAndre Aiden shooting 60% and averaging 16 points and 10 rebounds, especially as a rookie, and still averaging a block. You know, DeAndre Aiden has been doing it everywhere, and DeAndre Aiden has also kind of shown that a lot of these big men to where they say, oh, you need to be able to shoot. DeAndre Aiden is kind of brought back, not not comparing DeAndre Aiden to Shaq, but he's kind of changed and he kind of changed the way the game came because a lot of people was like, well, is he going to be successful if he can't show that he can hit this three-pointer shot consistently because he's shooting 0% from behind the line for three. DeAndre Aiden has yet to make a three-pointer this season, but he's still able, excuse me, to, he's still able to score. He's still able to get it done on the court. Now, how does that transpire into, could DeAndre Aiden be leading his team into, you know, if he had a jump shot, would his team be better? Uh, they might have 13 wins instead of 11. But what I'm saying is that DeAndre Aiden has shown that even though he's he's definitely getting himself open, especially when a lot of his points come off of pick and rolls and, you know, lobs, etc. But he's still getting it done. He's still being productive in his offense, especially with a Devin Booker, which I do have hopes for the Phoenix Suns, man. But. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to put these players out here, man, to let you guys know that some of these guys are out here averaging. I just kind of, like I said, this video wasn't made to to discredit Luka. Like I said, if you want to go with Luka as Rookie of the Year, I can say, I can agree with Luka being Rookie of the Year, but I can also kind of say, I'm not going to say Trey Young and DeAndre Aiden are nowhere near close to these guy, this guy, you know what I mean? I want to say that Trey Young, it could be, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to the end of the, uh, end of the season, who does it better. You know, and another thing that kind of has to count into this is injuries, etc. Lucas played what 49 games, DeAndre Aiden's played 47 games, and I think Trey Young's played like 49, 48. Some, some around all of them has played around the same amount of games. So, like I said, one of the things that's gonna come down to the end of the season is who's played the most game, how many minutes are you clocking in? Because minutes can also be a thing. Because if you play 15 minutes and you average that, that makes you look good, but at the same time, it's like, what can you not play 30 minutes? You know, because like I said, a lot of these guys are on younger teams. Luke it just so happens to have more veterans on his team in my opinion like i said let me know what you guys think down in the comment section that's just my opinion now if i who i go rookie of the year i don't know like i said it could be a tie between all three of these guys that's why they're in this video so let me know what you guys think let me know if there's any rookies that you think i might have left off on this list let me know if you say hey you got a rookie you think let me know down in the comment section. I definitely love to see what you guys think because everybody has their own opinion. And I definitely love reading the comment section and seeing what you guys have to tell me. Because sometimes I do mess up on things. Some you know I'm human. So I would definitely love to see what you guys have. So yeah, it's your boy Day0511. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this type of video. I enjoyed making it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Also, I have a video that I want to do of some teams that are buying and selling. Let me know what you guys think of that. Uh, what I mean by buying and selling is where I break it down and show a lot of these teams that are either preparing for free agency or they're going to try to make trades before this trade deadline. Uh, you guys should have seen the Pelicans video by now. Um, you know, oh, please. That's what I'm saying. Please don't go anthony davis but look man anyway i'm not gonna hold y'all up anymore it's your day 0511 aka ricky raymond jr and uh yeah i'll catch y'all in the next one i'm out